Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So, as I pointed out in my previous video for CMU version 1.15.7, this Wii U emulator is now going to be releasing new builds every two weeks, as opposed to the previous release cycle which was generally a new build every month. Since 1.15.7 has now been available for 14 days or more, this of course means that the new version is now released and available, this version is titled 1.15.8, and in this video I'm going to be going over absolutely everything that has changed in this brand new emulator version. Before we get started, no, the Vulkan graphics API is not available in this new CMU version, and while community speculation points to the fact that it may be released in some kind of alpha or a beta form in 1.16.0, we are still going to have to wait to see exactly when it gets released, as we pretty much have no concrete evidence on exactly when this is going to happen. So again, if you are an AMD GPU user and you're looking for the best performance on CMU emulator, using Linux is still by far your best option, and again, if you're looking for the easiest possible setup guide showing you all steps from start to finish, you'll find my Linux Ubuntu 19.04 setup guide linked down in the description of this video. Now that all that information is out of the way, let's jump straight into it and take a look at all the changes coming in 1.15.8. First up, we're going to be taking a look at some overlay changes where they have given us the option to scale any of the text size for any of the overlays within CMU. This option is changeable within the user interface, and the option itself can be swapped between values of 50 and 200% values moving in increments of 25%. Just one of the elements which this changes is the overlay which you can currently see on screen right now in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild currently being set to a value of 150%, making it much much more visible for usage in videos like this to show off a benchmark performance of the emulator. Staying on overlay settings, they have moved some options into a separate notification overlay, and on top of this, they have added new notification options, one for friends list information, so for friend requests, and also notifications of friends who come online or go offline, and finally in this overlay section, they have added something that a lot of CMU users are going to be very happy about, they have added a new notification which not only shows you when you are compiling shaders, but also how many shaders you have just compiled. Hopefully this new notification is going to help with debugging issues, especially so in relation to shader compilation stutter, letting each and every user know exactly if, when, and exactly how many shaders they are caching at any moment in time. Now, obviously, the previously mentioned notifications in relation to friends, friends list, and notifications of being on or offline are only at this moment in time going to be useful for people who already have their files dumped from their Wii U console, but with the perspective creation of other customized servers outside the Wii U console itself, these new notifications may be very, very useful in future. Obviously, these custom online servers are nowhere near ready for use right now and are very early in development. Regardless, I want wanted to make all of you guys aware of them so that you know that these notifications for both friends, online and offline aren't going to be useless and should be available for usage for many CMU users once these online server mods become available. Okay, so moving on to something a little bit more exciting for 1.15.8, let's take a look at some GX2 or graphical upgrades in this new release. So thanks to upgrades, optimizations and accuracy improvements in the stream out cache for CMU, they have addressed the following issues, first of all in relation to Tekken Tag Tournament 2 that you're watching right now, they have fixed the corrupted colors and textures on all of the character models in game. Now unfortunately, Tekken Tag 2 does still have some graphical issues, mostly rearing their heads in areas that have very bright lights, but to be honest, from a gameplay perspective, these are, I wouldn't say unnoticeable, but they really do not harm the gameplay experience too much, and again, thanks to these new upgrades to the textures on the character models, this game I would say can now be considered fully playable at awesome performance levels. Another graphical upgrade we have seen due to this improvement in Streamout Cache has been actually applied to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is in fact one of the first upgrades The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has directly gotten in probably about 8 months now, and you can even see exactly what it has changed on screen right now. So previously, these particle effects, like these little streams of cloud or fog moving across the screen, would become completely broken and reset their position upon opening your rune menu, pausing or 
before pretty much doing anything that stopped the gameplay, this issue has now been completely solved in this latest 1.15.8 version. Similarly, when you kill any of the enemies in the game, the plumes of fog, smoke and particles that appear when you kill them has now been completely fixed, now correctly rendering all of these effects at all times in gameplay. Staying on new graphical updates and fixes, they have resolved an issue where a GX2 copy surface was calculated wrong, meaning that games that suffered with texture corruptions like Lost Reavers, Ninja Gaiden, Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark and the game you're watching right now, Devil's Third, have been graphically fixed. Again, as with Tekken Tag 2, Devil's Third still suffers some issues in relation to a bloom in highly exposed lighting areas. Again though, as with Tekken, the game's playability is pretty much in no way hindered by these bloom issues and this game can now basically be considered fully playable. Something of note and something that I also found quite humorous was the fact that one of the games that was just graphically fixed, Lost Reavers, has also just seen its online servers shut down in the last 2 or 3 days basically meaning that any of its online co-op or online functionality is now no longer going to be available either to players on a CMU or players on the Wii U itself. Obviously, it's not one of the most demanding or the most important titles to a lot of people, but I just thought this was quite funny considering it just got graphically fixed on CMU on the same day it got shut down online. Okay, so moving away from graphical updates for now, we're going to move on to some library fixes where they have fixed a potential crash in the curl INT methods, improved accuracy and behavior of read callbacks, and as a result of these two new upgrades, this has fixed a crash when uploading levels in Super Mario Maker. Again, a pretty important fix considering the popularity of Super Mario Maker, especially so with users who have their Wii U online files dumped. And again, this could be very, very important for people who want to play Super Mario Maker on the previously mentioned custom servers whenever they get released. Another update in this CMU version is the implementation of OS Console Write. This is basically going to print any console output onto your log.txt. This log.txt, if you're not aware of what it is, is basically what we use for debugging issues with CMU Emulator. And to be honest, this is quite an odd implementation for CMU, and it almost seems like when paired with the previously mentioned notifications for friends list, that the CMU team could possibly be aware of some kind of servers coming online for use with CMU Emulator, and they're preparing for it with updates like this. While I usually don't like to speculate on future updates, it just seems a little odd that we're getting all of these updates, especially so for notifications, friends lists and the like, aren't going to be used at large by most people on a PC. Let me know what you guys think about these perspective custom servers again down in the comments section. Okay, so moving on to the final section of the changes for 1.15.8, these are going to be mostly input changes in relation to the VPAD for the emulator. First up, they have fixed VPAD controller motor using the wrong pattern length. This is going to fix Xbox 360 controllers and not having rumble feedback, most notably when mapping to the Wii U gamepad and using X input. And finally, again in relation to VPAD and input, they have fixed a very rare crash that could be caused by using Rumble on either X input or direct input controllers. This fix applies to both Xbox 360, Xbox One and all Sony PlayStation pads, so if you've ever had any crashes in relation to Rumble either in the input window or caused by in-game Rumble activity, please make sure to update to 1.15.8 when it releases to public. Again, as I said at the very start of this video, this is going to be released to everyone for free on the 7th of June, so once it does, I will be releasing an updated guide, my monthly CMU update guide, to show you all of the best settings for getting games, getting your games set up and having everything running at the best possible performance levels. That's pretty much it for all of the updates and upgrades in CMU 1.15.8, but before I go, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Without your continued support, I really would not be able to release as many videos as I already do, so to all of my past and present pledges, thank you very, very much. 
If you want to help with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming and get your name featured on this thank you scroll, as well as access to the exclusive Patreon channel over on the BSOD Gaming Discord, all you have to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash BSOD Gaming and pledge to support the channel. Again, you'll find a link for that Patreon down in this video's description, but as I always say, pledges and donations are 100% not required for help from me either here on YouTube or over on my Discord, but again, if you do choose to donate and pledge, thank you very, very much. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Once again, cheers for checking it out. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.